This video contains no spoilers for Halo the Rubicon Protocol. Be sure to check the link in the description to try Audible Plus and get this book for free with your free trial. Before we start this video, just let me say that uh, Halo the Flood is probably the best media tie-in book that I've personally ever read. Um, now, when I say this, I don't mean that as it's like a great book. I'm going to be honest with you, there are other Halo books that are much higher up on my personal tier list. But what the Flood managed to do for me is it captured the entire story of CE's campaign and explained it in so many different ways, it's almost a different story entirely. From humans turning on each other, to the many battles the Marines and ODST faced and took part in. I mean, for God's sake, they even made it into a freaking arcade game. I mean, to the psychological horror of the Flood being explained in excruciating detail. The book ups every ante that we've had playing through CE for the first time, and it elevates it all to another level. But there hasn't been another book quite like it in the series since, and myself and many others have thought that that was a damn shame. But here comes Halo the Rubicon Protocol, and it honestly surprised me. I knew going into it that it took place immediately following the banished ambush on the Infinity, but I didn't think that they would get so damn close to the main story of Infinite that I could literally load it up and follow through with the character's footsteps in game. I like I'm not exaggerating here when I say that experiencing the events of Halo Infinite after reading this book has again just elevated its story to another level like the flood did for me all those years ago. But until you read about what actually went on and follow the UNSC forces, you really don't know anything. Nothing anyone says in game can prepare you for the literal hell they make this time frame out to be the banished forces under eshram's command are straight up nightmare fuel and the book does for the banished what the flood did for well the flood yeah i can't really come up with a stupid joke to say here but <laughs> but it also made me care for the personnel of the infinity I mean, we find out in the campaign of Halo Infinite, spoiler warning if you haven't watched a Hidden Xperia recap or beaten it yourself for some reason, uh, the pilot's obviously broken and scared, so much so that he actually stole the pelican that we used throughout the campaign so he could escape from the Infinity. And this is kind of the theme between the two, both the campaign and this book, that is just overwhelming loss. And I think this loss is what gives so much more weight to Chief being the beacon of hope that he is. Because you see the UNSC get destroyed. And I, I don't just mean physically, like their ships are broken. I mean their spirits. Like if you did not enjoy the pilot being a broken mess, reading this book will make you probably not enjoy having those thoughts because of just how much shit actually goes down. I mean, sure, the first time I played through the campaign, I felt like a superpowered badass kicking in some alien teeth because they did some mean things, you know? They always do mean things. But hearing and reading exactly what they did and being able to see the bodies and blood with my own two eyes in game makes me feel as though I'm actually in Chief's shoes. And not even the Flood really does this, because that actually follows through the game, and it almost overrides what you do when you play by telling you that Chief did this. Now, it's a little vague at points for obvious reasons, but it, it was a really good tie-in. This book literally just gives context to just about every background that you could possibly think of in some small ways, and others in very large ways. For example, not going to give any more context than this, but Outpost Tremonius is very explicitly named and described, and you can follow through and see exactly what some of these characters were experiencing. But the one that really got me was when Chief grabbed the upgraded shield module from the Fallen Spartan in the second mission. When I did this again, my heart literally sank. 
And when the grunt opened the door, spouting the usual nonsense, I made sure he ate a fusion coil for Bonita. Now, I don't want to go any further into this uh, because I could go on for hours. And honestly, some of the best parts of this book are in the very specific details that just give so much context to the game as a whole. So I really do encourage you to read it for yourself. And if you don't feel like reading it, you can always go to the description below to try Audible Plus and get Halo the Rubicon Protocol for free with your trial. No fees, no cancellation requirements. Just try it and get your Halo audiobook so you can really experience the way I feel Halo Infinite should be. But that's going to be it for today, guys. Um, I'm going to have another video talking about this and what this book actually made me think Halo needs a sequel to. Um, so that's going to be coming out soon. But anyways, guys, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, be sure to slap that like button down below and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll be sure to see you guys in the next one.